tutorial is going to be showing you how to place a class 2 bulk filling Equia Forte, which is a glass hybrid restorative material. Um, if you're used to working with resin composite, it can be tricky to transition to using a glass ionomer restorative because you really handle it differently. Um, and I know some people struggle with that. I know I struggled with it initially, so hopefully this will help you get a feel for how it should look and feel um, to make sure you're not accidentally breaking your marginal ridges when you're removing your matrix band. And honestly, the best analogy is to think of it like this is white amalgam. If you handle it like it's amalgam and think of it as being kind of soft and delicate initially, but you know in time it's gonna be incredibly strong, it's more resistant to recurrent decay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's really an amazing material. So once you get the hang of it and get over that learning curve, uh, you're, you're gonna love it. Okay, so I have a type knot here, and you can do this as well. I would, I would definitely recommend to try it out either on a type knot or on extracted teeth first before attempting to do class twos in a patient. Um, I would definitely get a lot of uh, sealants and class ones under your belt before you go to multi-surface uh, restorations with Equia Forte, especially in, in permanent teeth. Um, so anyhow, I have some class twos prepped. There's a variety of matrix systems that I use and that you might use. And honestly, it just depends on the scenario. It depends on the patient, depends on the anatomy of the tooth. I just use my spider senses and on different days, I might use a sectional matrix and one day I might want a de novo band. So that, that's the, the artistry part of dentistry. There's not, it's not one plus one equals two. It's, you know, oh, I need a shade of this and a shade of that. You just have to, to go with the flow. I'm gonna show you both ways I have a sectional. I like to call this the kidney bean. So you see how it's kind of small and curved, so one of these guys. Um, I love these C rings, those C, super easy to work with. And you use your rubber dam forceps and it, they really make nice contacts. And as long as the, the floor of the box in your class two prep is sealed, you're good to go. Um, this is a garrison matrix band, so, um, or sectional, I should say, or ring. Uh, so these can be used with a wedge. So let's say you have a scenario where there's a gap at the bottom of your box between the matrix band and the prep. Obviously you wanna seal that up. So this one's nice because you can slide the wedge. It has a little um, opening to fit the wedge in there. Let me show you. So this would just like slide in and out. So that's an option if there's a gap in the bottom of the box of your prep. All right, so let's pretend that you have the teeth isolated and you've already conditioned them with for 10 seconds using the 20% polyacrylic acid cavity conditioner from GC. Okay, and now you've rinsed it. And the best way to dry it is you're not over drying it like you would a resin. You're not desiccating it and blasting it with compressed air and waiting it for it to look frosty white. Don't do that. That is, that's appropriate for resin because you're gluing something and you're making resin tags. This is different. This is chemical bonding. Um, the material is hydrophilic. It needs a little bit of moisture to set. It can't be a pool of spit or water. Um, but I like to use the, the high volume suction to, to suck off the extra water and the surface should just look glistening um, with moisture. No pooling moisture, but it can be glistening. So don't over dry it, okay? And then you're gonna mix your Equia Forte. So this is just an A1. You mix it for 10 seconds. So you just take it out of the pouch. Wait until you're ready to use it before you take it out of the pouch and wait until you're ready to use it to activate the capsule by depressing this little button. So that's gonna break a seam in between the powder and the liquid. Put it in your capsule mixer. This one is so easy because it just, like you don't have to struggle with it like some of the old fashioned amalgamators. And then 10 seconds. And you need to be ready to go as soon as it comes out. Um, it's two minutes and 30 seconds to set, but I give it an extra minute for a class two. Okay, so immediately get it out of the mixer, get it in your applicator gun, and you wanna immediately deliver it into the tooth. You're gonna to have to 
click the gun a few times to get it to start to extrude up the end of the capsule. You can express out a little bit if you like. And then just place, place the tip down in the bottom of the box. And then I like to just backfill. Sometimes I'll kind of do an up and down motion to make sure it's all the way in there. You can use the excess in the capsule to seal the grooves on the rest of the tooth. You could use it to seal other teeth, yada, yada. <laughs> all right. So when it's shiny and glistening, you can just move it around gently. You can use an uh, instrument dipped in the Acquia coat like this. Um, you can use a micro brush dipped in the coat, but the working time is short. You have about a minute and 15 seconds, and it honestly can vary depending upon heat and humidity. If I'm in Arizona, it's hot, it's dry. You can't mess around with this too much. If anything, it's better just to leave it alone and cut it back later after it's fully set than trying to mess around with it. You don't want to disrupt the cross-linking while the glass is setting. So see how I just kind of get it into place. You can pack it a little bit and now just leave it alone. And let it set for that full three minutes and 30 seconds is how long I wait at least for a class two. A class one, two minutes, 30 seconds is totally fine. But a class three, or excuse me, a class two, you really don't want to remove the matrix too early or you could accidentally break the box or break the marginal ridge. So again, the analogy of an amalgam. Uh, if you try to yank on the band on an amalgam, you could break the box, right? So same same thing with this glass, but over time, it's gonna be incredibly strong and, and, and wear resistant. You can also use the coat just to help compress it down into the box and get a little bit of anatomy, but again, it's better to just overfill it and cut it back later than overworking the material. Don't overwork the material. Okay, once you have the coat on there, you do want to light cure it. Light curing the heat of it will also accelerate the set. It's an unfilled resin. It'll help protect the material in its immature state and prevent moisture loss or moisture gain. Also helps prevent the material from sticking to your instruments. Okay, all right. So we still have time before I would feel comfortable taking the matrix band off. Um, so this really is the critical portion of, of, of what are the tricks to not um, mess up taking the, the band off. So it's been more than three minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm gonna check, even though it's been a long time, I'm gonna check and make sure there's no softness or wetness here, okay? And make sure it's not moving at all or it doesn't feel like it's still um, trying to dry. This feels nice and hard, we're good, we're good to go. If it did still feel liquidy, I would cure it again. I would wait a little longer, but this, this is definitely set. So now I feel comfortable to go ahead and take off that C ring. So I'll use my forceps, pop that ring off of there, okay? And now the trick here is what I'll, I'll do is I'll gently peel the matrix back and away from the filling. Again, think like it's an amalgam. And then I'll very carefully slide this horizontally out to the side, okay? I like to say it's kind of like opening a sardine can. Okay, you just very carefully slide it out. Out to the side, just like that. Perfect, and I didn't break anything. It didn't stick to the band. And now, if you have one of these bands, like a de novo band, do not attempt to just yank this straight up like you could for a resin. Don't do that, you'll break that box. Trust me, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so what you do is you're just gonna break the seam on the de novo band. So I'm just gonna pop that baby open. I like to peel this off. It's different on a human. <laughs> this type of is very cooperative. It's very different, okay? And then I'm gonna very gently just, I like to tease it away from the band, just kind of push the band back and away. <laughs> That's for my other two. Okay, so tease the band away 
very carefully, gently, all right? And then you're gonna shimmy and slide the matrix out horizontally to the side. If you could come palatally, because this is shorter, awesome, do it. If you can't, you gotta go the other way. Okay, so I just grab it. I like to compare it to like peeling open a sardine can. Sometimes I'll do this like little twisting motion ever so gently so I'm not pulling up on that um, marginal ridge. Okay, so just slide it out gently to the side. Voila, and I didn't break it. So now we're ready to adjust. And the best way to adjust is to use a slow speed with a polishing stone while your assistant is spraying um, with water. If you try to use a high speed with a, with a burr, like a carbide burr or a finishing burr, it's still a little soft. So think again, like amalgam. Remember in dental school when you had to do amalgam and you would bring your patient back like a month later so you could polish your amalgam? Remember those glory days? <laughs> so luckily you don't have to do that. You can polish it today, but just don't go crazy with high speed burrs where you could gouge accidentally the, the equia because it's still going to be slightly soft. Um, so I like to use a polishing stone. This is my favorite one, um, the blue ones from Garrison. There's different shapes. Um, there's a point, there's a cup shape. I have both, um, but these really work the best to just smooth and polish um, the equia. And again, you need to use water spray, okay? All right, so I'm ready to polish. I already mentioned that I like this uh, blue polishing stone. Make sure that your assistant is spraying water while you're doing this because you don't want to overheat or over dry the material. This is tabletop. Let's use our imagination. So pretend there's water coming out of this. Pretend there's suction happening. Um, but here we go. So you see how there's a little blue particle. So I, I would have to rinse this off, obviously. Okay, so now it's all smooth and polished. I used water spray and my polishing stone. Now um, you can check the bite, obviously, and reduce any um, high spots. And then the final step, of course, is to floss the contact. So just gently floss it down. Okay, and don't just yank it straight up. So same concept with the matrix band. I just carefully slide it out the side. That's a nice tight contact. Okay, and then here's our other one. So gently floss it down. All right, so the other side, just gently floss it down. Okay, and then I just slide it out the side. Okay, um, the final step is I will tell them to eat soft food only for 48 hours. So again, think like amalgam. You don't want them going home and eating almonds if you just placed an amalgam, right? So same thing with the glass ionomer. Soft food only, 48 hours. It's a lot of stuff that people like and kids especially love. Mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, um, ice cream, etc. So I'll also elaborate and say, you know, no, no hard, crunchy nuts or tortilla chips, stuff like that. You can have that in 48 hours, but for the first two days, something soft, just so you don't accidentally um, damage it. And then it'll be nice and durable and beautiful for many years to come. I've never had anyone complain of post-operative sensitivity. We see way less recurrent caries. I've seen adjacent teeth remineralize because of the, the fluoride release. Um, it's my favorite material. It's the magical unicorn. All right, hope that was helpful.